This is a Bodhi. This is a Tex or a Texas. And uh, in this video, we're gonna go over some little tips that you can use if you have a puppy and adult dog together. Now, uh, basically, uh, this is, you can see little Bodhi, he is the puppy. And he likes to, uh, uh, to really, he pesters uh, Tex here quite a bit. And I think part of this is uh, he really is under-exercised. Um, he gets to play around in the backyard a little bit. Um, he goes to our puppy classes and he does well there. But I think basically he keeps on coming to Tex and saying, Tex, it's your job, to your responsibility to get me some exercise. And uh, so I haven't seen it really bad. He's growled at him, he snapped at uh, Bodhi a couple times, but minor deals. But a lot of the times, Oh, there we go. That's very good. See, Texas can do stuff. He's just not motivated to do stuff. But basically, there have been times where Texas has kind of gone after Bodhi. Now, what I've seen here is a little a growl, a little air nip, and, and that's it. Um, but the Guardians haven't been disagreeing all the time and kind of hoping that they kind of sort it out there amongst themselves, which a lot of people do. Now, remember, every time you push your dog down, you're just going to make the dog come back again. Oh. So just ignore. Okay. And just go ahead and go back to your original seating position. There you go. So now part of this might be that Tex here is a little bit possessive of this guardian because these two were a couple. Then this guardian entered the equation and then he came in. So uh, now Tex has to kind of share where he didn't have to do any of that before. Also the guardian doesn't have any rules for Texas and just really fawns all over him. And so he could be a little bit petulant and think that the world revolves around him. So I talked a little bit off camera about incorporating some rules and, and making sure that we're enforcing those. So both dogs see that, that yes, you will too, you little kink, stinker. He's trying to get in my treat pouch right here. Um, but basically the more rules that, and structure that we can provide, the more the dogs start to see and identify us as being authority figures. I think these dogs think that, uh, well, I think that Tex thinks that this person right here is here to service him. Um, so um, well, some of the things we went over with uh, would be passive training and petting with a purpose. Sit, sit, that's petting with a purpose. So he came over, he wanted attention. I asked him to sit and I waited for him to sit. And when he did, I petted him under his chin and said the word sit. Um, now, if he were to do it on his own, which we'll see if he'll do that here in a second, then I'll pet him within three seconds of him doing it on his own. And so uh, you have three seconds of correct to reward your dog for whatever they're doing. So if the dog does something we want and we pet them and mark it by saying whatever the command word is, and then they suddenly get attention, that makes the dog more motivated to want to do that. You're not doing that on the camera. That's okay. We'll just use your cuteness. Now he's jumping up. If I pet him, then I'm rewarding that. If I push him down, he's going to come back again. So remember not to do those things. I kind of got a little bit off track. We're, let's go back to Texas here and some things we could do together. Now, uh, do the dogs, uh, do you take them for walks together ever? Sometimes, yeah. How are they all over the place on the walks or right next to you? Uh, Tex stays pretty close to us. Bodhi is like... Okay, so for dogs, like we like seeing uh, them do uh, things together, um, and that like a walk together. But if you let you, Bodie run in front and Texas is next to you, then Bodie kind of gets the perception of being in charge. So we want to make sure that we're not doing that, so the dogs are kind of uh, seeing us acting like leaders, um, and or, or not so acting like leaders. But if Bodie runs in front, then that's going to motivate Texas to want to go in front, and then we have kind of them. Uh, competing for attention. So um, let me see. So uh, when you see, uh, I was trying to kind of formulate this here, but basically Bodhi hasn't been cooperating. But if Bodhi's up here uh, protesting at Tex, uh, that right now we're letting Tex on the, on, the, on the furniture and Bodhi's not. And that gives Tex a little bit of a reprieve. Now Tex is not, he acts like an old dog, but he's not. Yes, he's like, man. Um, he's only, what, six? Seven. Seven, so I mean, he's not even half uh, middle-aged at this point. And so he, can, uh, he has been, uh, plenty of uh, exercise and he can do stuff, but exercising or playing games where they can play, do things together is also a wonderful way for them to bond. Um, practicing having them uh, sit together can be a nice way to do it. So I'm gonna transition the, the phone here. And uh, so we're gonna do a little bit of what I call uh, paratreating. So since they're little dogs, I'm going to tear these treats in half. We'll let them see that I both see that I have this. Sit. Sit. We do this a lot in our puppy class. So at first, I gave him a treat pretty much right away. Come here. Sit. Up. Sit. Now, I kind of delayed that second one a little bit so they it had to kind of remain in the sit for a minute. Sit. Sit. 
sit. Sitting puts dogs in a more subordinate position. It puts them in a little bit of a disadvantage. Um, also, a lot of times when dogs have a fight, they just, we separate the dogs, and the last thing they remember about that other dog was something negative. So in our puppy classes um, that Bodhi's in, uh, we do this pair treating a lot, where we ask the dogs to sit, and then we're having them basically practice being some, in a more subordinate position next to each other, and the motivation is to get the treat that's in my hand. So they're more thinking about the treat than each other, but what they are essentially doing is practicing doing things together. And so you can do it with a lot of different capacities. Let's see if we can incorporate this bad boy. This is the dog bed. It's actually Bodie's dog bed. But Texas, we can use it for you too. Texas, come here, buddy. Bodie will put you over here. Texas, come here. Come here, Texas. Come on, Texas. Sit. Well, that's completely off the dog bed. And this is a little bit of a small dog bed. Texas, come here. Sit. Sit. But you see, we want them to practice doing things together where they have a positive experience. Now, if there is a fight or something like that, I want, I want you to separate them when we give them a chance to settle down. But then come back in and have some treats like I did. Texas, come here. So he's not super scared of him or anything like that. He's willing to come over. He's motivated properly. Sit. You are like a fart in the frying pan. Sit. So they both were here. They both were getting treats. They're lingering near one another. Down, down, down. So you can put them sit, down, all the different commands that they know, but having them do, have a joint experience can be really helpful. Um, really, he just kind of Texas, I think, sees him just being a nuisance. He just bounces, he won't shut up, he just keeps on pounding away. Finally, after I lose my temper and I yell at him or I bite him. And so because the guardians are not inter uh, interceding. So because he's a puppy and he has a lot of energy, um, I would recommend when he comes over and he's being a nuisance, that we interpret that as his way of saying, I have too much exercise, energy. So he's pestering Texas, I want you to pay, uh, pay attention to me. Well, we can use different things to keep him to exercise him. So this is a nice way to exercise dogs, um, as long as the dog's not too manic about it. And I can run him down the hallway. Yeah, don't let him look up here, because if he looks and sees it here, he'll stop looking on the floor. Uh, but so what I'd like the Guardians to do is when, when, when Bodie is being a bit of a pill to uh, Texas is to interpret that as Bodie's way of saying I have too much energy. So I need to play uh, run up and down the stairs to get treats. I need to chase laser. We were playing fetch and a fetch would be a great way for him to do that as well. So it, that helps the dog see that, well, when he's being a nuisance, the, the humans come in to handle the situation for me. So I don't have to correct him. The humans are going to do that. By depleting his excess energy, we can put him in a position to succeed because he gets done, he's gonna come over here and plop down and catch his breath. Um, and so I talked about starting an exercise journal to figure out how much exercise he actually needs. Um, but coming up with those sort of things can be really beneficial, walking them together, as long as you get them walking next to each other. We, what we wanna do is we wanna build up some positive credits of them doing things together where they enjoy it. Um, I also talked about uh, feeding. Now he is, uh, Texas basically has, uh, it could be resource guarding. I think he just growls a lot when, when he comes near, when he has his bowl down, even the bowl's empty. And so probably because Bodhi tries to go over there and take his food. And so that's natural in the dog world. So by going to a structured eating and making sure that when Texas is eating, uh, Bodhi's not allowed to be in it. Right now Bodhi's fed in his uh, large room confinement area, but right now when the guardian eats, Texas is like right there and he'll try to steal food from her and she doesn't disagree with that. Or if she's cooking food, he's allowed in the kitchen as well. So he doesn't have any practice at restraining himself. He thinks he should just get anything he wants whenever he wants. And it's fine if you have one dog, but you bring in another dog and a puppy at, to boot, then it's going to create some problems as well. So this is really a weird video because normally I'm like doing an exercise when I'm talking about one specific thing, but there's a whole lot of little things that you guys can do. Most importantly, interrupting when he starts being a pest to him, getting him some exercise, and then after that, before you let him finish, do a little pair treating, or go for a little mini walk. It doesn't have to be a long walk. Walk him to three houses back and then back here, and then you know that exercise can help deplete their energy, and then they were, the last thing I remember about being with that other dog was something good and positive that they liked. Come here, Bodie. Come here, Bodie. Oh, this is a Bodie. Yes. Boy, he's, he's a cute little furball. And right over here is Panda Tex. This is Texas. Yes, also a very handsome fellow. And these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have an older dog and a young puppy and they're not always getting along. Yeah.